All right, let's keep digging into this polymorphism thing and hammer through some of the rules, what you can do and what you can't do. In the last video, you guys saw that once you know your project and how you've built your extends and your classes and your subclasses, you can do this beginner idea with polymorphism. A reference variable doesn't always have to point to the exact same type like student S points to a student, but you can start doing student points to a subclass of whatever your reference type is. So our reference type here was student, exchange student is a subclass down the chain, that works fine. Now in this video we're going to talk about methods and if you actually start to do this kind of stuff, what are some rules, restrictions and things you can do? So here's the first thing we want to point out. Students will always uh, get tricked um, into thinking that if I say, hey person, talk. Now, let's go back and look what P was. P is a reference to a person. Now, a person has a talk method. But, this reference is pointing in memory to a student that was created. Now, a student also has a talk method. And just to refresh you, this one we said like, hi, I'm a student talking. This one says, Hi, I'm a person talking. The question is, which one gets run? Your reference type is person, but the actual object in memory is student. Well, which talk method is it going to use? Well, we can just check this with a quick test here. Let's just run runner2, and let's see what it prints out. And there's your answer right there, student talk. And so your general rule there is whatever you created in memory, that's going to be the methods that are used or the code that's run. So in memory, there's actually this, a student with student code and person code combined. Even though your reference is person, when it says talk, it's going to use the method from what's in memory. Okay, that's what's being stored there. That's what it runs. Okay, so that's one first key point. Okay, it runs the one in memory. Okay, second little thing we want to show you in here is just the rules of the compiler. So check this out. P.talk. I should have just left that one there, right? P.talk. Works fine. Why? The compiler says, what's P? P is a person. What can a person do? A person can talk. Perfect. The person class can talk. That line is good. No red underlines. But watch what happens when I do this, p.study. I get the red line, and it says, cannot find symbol study. Well, this is what the compiler is doing when it scans this. It says, hey, p is what? p is a reference to a person. Okay, and you're trying to study. So it goes and checks the class, and it goes, okay, a person, study, 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 study. Nope, can't find it. You can't type that in. Okay, it's not allowed. Now, of course, we're showing you this because students will say, but you set it in memory to point to a new student. Why can't I study? The study method has to be there because in memory you have this student and it has study. And you know what? They're right. The method is there. You can use it, but you can't use it by doing this. The main compiler rules are the main compiler rules and the rules of the language. A reference to a person cannot study. Okay, It's not part of the class, so that's not allowed. But here's what you could do if you knew in memory that was pointing to a student. And don't ask me now, well, we'll do it later. But if you did know it was a student for sure, you could do this. You could say, cast P as a student and ask it to study. So this is like when you cast your integers and your doubles between each other when you need to. You can also do it with objects. So it's another little element of polymorphism here. You have P, right? It's just a reference in memory. If it can be cast into a student, then this right here will now be treated like a student object by the compiler. Can a student study? Well, yeah, it goes and checks the student class, and yes, study is in there, that's allowed. And so that's good. Now, to actually see if this works, let's just give it a runner here, and you'll see it works. And it says, 
Yeah, student talk, and then it goes studying. And so it did successfully cast P into a student and use the study method because in memory, there was actually a student there. So it casted it, no problem. Now, what's an example of if you try to cast it and it can't be turned into a student? Well, let's try to do this with P2. P2 is pointing in memory to a teacher. So let's use P2 this time. And notice something here. The compiler doesn't detect this. P2, all it knows is the compiler knows P2 is a person. The fact that it's actually pointing to a teacher in memory doesn't happen until the program starts and runs. And so here we don't get a compile error. It says, well, if P2 was cast into a student, this would be a student, and students can call the study method. That's okay, but watch what happens when we run it. When we run runner2 now, ooh, it did the talk method fine, because yeah, it could talk, but when we tried to cast this into a student, this is a runtime error. So we get the exception, class cast exception error. Student teacher teacher cannot be cast to student teacher student. Uh, just look at the class names here, okay? Student and teacher. And you get the error and your program's busted. And in a following video, we're actually going to look at, okay, well, when might these weird situations pop up? We'll see in a little bit. But those are the two big rules here. So first rule was when you go to call methods, it calls the methods from the object you created, not from the class. That's your reference. The second rule was is you can only call methods that belong to your reference type. P is a person, you can only call methods from person. S2 is a student, you can only call methods from student. You can't touch the exchange student methods or members. It's not going to work. And then this was just a little extra for this point, not too crucial, but if you did want to call the methods from exchange student, you can always cast this student into an exchange student, just like we casted this P originally into a student, and it all worked out fine. That's enough for this video. We'll uh, get you to practice a few questions about it, and then get back to the next one. We'll start to get an idea of why this stuff can start to be useful. Thanks for watching.